Chapter five, The Little Robber Girl. The coach surged through the forest, its golden lamps casting an eerie glow on the passing trees. The horses' hooves crunched the carpet of pine needles and sent the wildlife sprinting for the shelter of the undergrowth. But not only animals lived in the depths of the forest. A band of robbers soon saw the jeweled carriage and the fine horses and wanted them. The attack was swift and terrible. The bandits soon slaughtered the coachman and a small guard that accompanied Gerda. The little girl was dragged, screaming from the coach, and thrown roughly on the ground. She looked up into the bearded, almost toothless face of a fat old crone. Well, said the crone with a mirthless cackle, she seems like a nice, pretty, plump one. Let's see how pretty she is when I bleed her dry. The cruel robbers howled with laughter, and the crone tapped a wicked curved knife that thrust into the belt of her apron. Gerda shrank back, terrified, and closed her eyes. She heard a rasping sound as the old hag drew the knife quickly, followed by a scream and a curse. Gerda opened her eyes to see the small, dark-haired girl clinging to her, clinging her um, to her the old woman's back. The crone couldn't shake her off and was too busy licking her hand where the wild child had bitten so deeply into her flesh. You shan't kill her. You shan't, she yelled. I want her, Gran. I want to play with her. I want her pretty clothes and fine gloves and her scarf. Hag glared at the girl. Very well, you spoiled little brat, she growled. Keep her then, but mind you, you don't let her out of your sight. Quick, into the carriage, the little robber girl urged Gerda before she changes her mind. The robber girl half carried Gerda into the carriage and sat her firmly down with a warm blanket over her knees. Why, you must be a princess with all these fine clothes, said the robber girl, looking in wonderment at the ornate furnishings inside the carriage. Oh no, squeaked Gerda, squeaked the petrified Gerda. I'm just a little girl like you. And she told her story again, yet this time quickly and not so well, for she was frightened and could barely speak clearly. Why, you poor thing, cried the robber girl when Gerda finished her story. I definitely won't let Grant kill you. If you must be killed, I'll just do it myself. <laughs> at that, she pulled a slim, sharp-looking dagger from her boot and grinned ferociously at Gerda. They drove through the woods to the robber's castle a stark, cold ruin with tiny windows and solid stone ramparts so the robbers could defend themselves. Huge black crows flew in and out of the upper windows, cawing and croaking and hooting, and massive brindled hounds leapt up and at the coaching greeting. The old crone yelled at the dogs and they backed away, slinking off to the castle with tails down. Gerda, still numb with fright, was rushed through the doors and across the great hall to the dark little corner at the rear. This is my corner, said the robber girl proudly. Now Gerda could see her clear clearly. She realized that the girl was her own age and height, but she was sturdy and rough looking from harsh outdoor life, and her hair was coal black, not fair like Gerda's. Her dark eyes flashed menacingly, and there was a dangerous wilderness in her nature. And here are my pets, she announced, waving her hands upwards. Gerda realized or Gerda raised her eyes, and in every nook and cranny of the wall, above the corner of the cavernous hall, nestled a white pigeon. The pigeons cooed, and the robber girl stroked and petted them roughly them she cried they won't bite nervously gerda stroked one of the pigeons a smaller and browner bird than the rest oh you like him he's one of my favorites he's a woodland bird i keep him tied up else he'd fly away as soon as i turn my back gerda noticed the tether attached to the wood pigeon's leg and stroked him more seeing the sad look in his eye here's my favorite said the robber girl pulling a rope tied to a pallet bed another one who would like to run away as the creature at the other end of the rope came into the light Gerda saw that it was a reindeer, a graceful reindeer with tall, sweeping antlers. The reindeer bowed to Gerda and looked mournful. Whether for at his own situation or Gerda wasn't sure, or hers, Gerda wasn't sure. I like to tickle my pets, said the robber girl with a wicked grin. She drew a blade and tickled the reindeer under her chin with the edge. He backed away, stamped his feet, but still the robber girl tormented him. Oh, why do you fuss so? She snapped crossly. You know I won't hurt you. Her fun over, the robber girl decided it was time for bed. Huddling under the furs on her pallet, she pulled Gerda to her and demanded to hear the story of her adventures again. As Gerda told her of how she and Kai sat on the balcony under the rose bush, the robber girl sighed and murmured, oh, I've never had a friend before. Maybe I shall keep you here forever with me. At that, the robber girl drifted off into a deep sleep, but Gerda stayed awake, stiff and cold, with fear and worry. She could see into the hall where the robbers drank and sang and danced in the firelight, the old crone turning cartwheels, a frightening spectacle, and the others roared their approval. Stay tuned for part two.